going to talk about uh, where the Great Dane uh, came from. And also, uh, in order to understand that, you have to understand where craft beer came from. Um, according to the Brewers Association, in 1873, there were over 4,000 breweries in the United States, which means every little town that there was had their own brewery. And when it came down to uh, marketing, uh, you had the big breweries, Anheuser-Busch, you had Miller, you had uh, uh, Pabst, all, all the big breweries, they had better marketing. And also one of the biggest things that Anheuser-Busch invented was being, uh, being able to transport beer cold. They figured out how to do refrigeration in the days before refrigeration with uh, ice houses along the railroad and everything. So the local breweries started getting pushed out. So from 1873, the number of breweries started declining. People started getting their main, main beers that they liked and they wouldn't patronize their local brewery anymore. By, so it, it, they declined steadily by 1920, of course, the beginning of Prohibition, there were zero. There were breweries still around, but they weren't producing beer. They were producing various other things that uh, just kept the machinery working, but it didn't make any alcohol. In uh, 1933, when Prohibition was repealed, there were 331 breweries popped open right then. And it steadily raised up to the beginning of World War II. 1941, there were over 800 breweries in the country. But still, uh, but not necessarily local breweries like there were back in the old days. Um, by 43, it started dying off again. And main reason for that was lack of uh, materials. There was rationing, there was food needed for the war effort. And so brewers just couldn't get the materials, the barley, in order to make beer anymore. And that's when the rise of what we call adjuncts started happening, started using corn and rice in beer, which gives you alcohol, but doesn't give you any flavor or any body. That's why most of your mass-produced American beers, uh, the, they're very light in body, light in color, but they still have uh, a little bit of alcohol in them, and that's because they're probably 60% rice or corn. Very, not as much uh, barley actually being used in them or malted grains. So that's where that started to change. Also, uh, with, the, with, with the use of adjuncts, the beers got lighter, and another reason they got lighter is because of women. Women were in the workforce. Women started, they, they started to market more to, uh, to women who wanted a lighter flavored beer. They didn't want a big porter. They wanted a nice light beer because it looked more presentable. You didn't want to be looking like you were slamming a tanker to something. It will look much better in a nice Pilsner glass. And men were coming back from the war. They were in Germany. They were drinking the lighter beers. And also uh, the Marines in the Pacific, they had their loads of whatever god awful beer they got full of, full of formaldehyde on their island resorts out there that they got to hang out on. And uh, so they came back with a lighter, uh, a desire for light, very uh, carbonated beers. That's why, I don't know if, if any of you or if any of you seen putting salt in a beer to make it foam up. That was mainly because a guy stationed in England during World War II and your standard English ale is very low in carbonation. So you, there would be no head on it, so they'd get salt to throw it in there to make the head pop up on it. And uh, to this day, a uh, normal English uh, cask-conditioned or hand-pulled beer is very low in carbonation. The ones we have at the Great Dane are very low in carbonation, less than one volume. So there's not a lot of uh, uh, foam on them. But the great thing about that is if you're having them with a dinner, the carbonation doesn't fill you up. And you burp a heck of a lot less when you're uh, drinking a, uh, an English ale than when you do, say, a German Pilsner or something to that effect. So the, this, uh, the beers got lighter, and uh, they also the bigger guys, Anheuser-Busch, Miller, Paps, Schlitz, they were making these lighter beers, and so the other breweries that uh, they, were, they, they were closing down. They just weren't making it. By 19, the, the lowest we ever hit, 1978, there were only 89 breweries in this country. Uh, that's so you figure in uh, just over a hundred years we lost 4,000 all you know three thirty five hundred breweries closed down just sitting around 
So there was no, no real uh, option to have a better beer. That was all we could get. And it was also the days before air travel. People weren't running to Europe to try different things that were over in Europe, England, Belgium, uh, Germany. You just didn't have it. So everybody got used to their standard brands. I, I was the same way. 1978 and on, I drank old style until I figured out how to make good beer. I mean, that's just what you had. So uh, the, it, it kept dropping. In 1979, a guy named Fritz Maytag uh, started a little brewery in San Francisco called the Anchor Steam Brewery. And he started putting out a California Common, a steam beer. And every, I don't know if everyone, anyone's heard of Anchor Steam, but it's quite a popular beer. But that is considered the first microbrewery, the first craft brewer was Fritz Maytag when he put out the Anchor, the Anchor Steam beer. And it's called an Anchor, the actual style of the beer is a California Common, which is the only truly American beer. All the other beers that we have are just uh, American versions of uh, another famous beer in another part of the country, or another part of the world. But a California Common is truly an American beer because it's a beer that's fermented at ale temperature with lager yeast. Lager yeast is made to ferment at a low temperature, and Fritz didn't want to do that. He, uh, he put the, ale, the lager yeast in, fermented at ale temperature so it would ferment quickly, and that's why it's called a steam beer, because it develops a heavy croissant on the top of it, which is the foam on the top of a beer when it's fermenting. And it, since it's such a heavy layer, when the gas pops through, it sounds like steam escaping from something. So they called it a steam beer. And that's where uh, that came from. So that was the original craft brewing. That's where it all started, 1979. Uh, just before that, in 76, President Carter signed into legislation making it legal that we could brew at home. Before that, and that's where um, my start, uh, before that, you were uh, an outlaw because you weren't supposed to be making that stuff at home. You were considered a bootlegger. So after 76, when we, had, when we could start making it at home, you had all these guys everywhere trying to, uh, trying different beers, trying cause, uh, to try different things. Somebody might have made it over to Europe one time and tried, to, tried a porter. So they figured, let's try and make that here and, and to do that. Uh, and so you had all these guys that are, that are making these beers. And uh, by the 80s, uh, the brew pubs, Fritz was making money. There were other breweries starting up in the, in the early 80s. Uh, Capital Brewery, for one, uh, in 85. Um, they, so there were breweries starting to open, and they were making good beer. Oh, I shouldn't say good beer. They were making different beer. Uh, 